booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm very excited because I'm doing my first tag video. It's called It's All Relative Tag and I was very kindly tagged by Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading and the original creator is AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. So I will link both of their channels down below. Now before I forget, I must importantly tag a few people. Um, so the first person I'd like to tag is Emily from Novel Novels. Secondly, Becca from Hicks Picks Books and Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. And I'll link all their channels down below. I don't think, ladies, that you've done this tag from memory. So um, if you haven't, then I'd love to see you give it a go and see your answers. So the first prompt is Mamma Mia. Tell us about a book that a mother is the pivotal character of the story. So for this, I decided to go with Room by Emma Donoghue. Now, this is the very sad story of a teenage girl who is kidnapped and kept locked up in a garage for many years. She is continually raped. And as a result of that, she has a little boy called Jack. And we begin this story when Jack is five years old. He's actually the one who's telling the story, which I know some people have found quite difficult, his the child perspective. Um, but I didn't mind that too much. But um, basically, they are locked up in this room, which is about 11 by 11 feet. And that is the only world that that little boy has ever known. And eventually they plan their escape. And I won't tell you exactly how they manage to do that escape. But then they have this outside world to deal with, which of course is extremely um, complex in the way that they must deal with um, the police investigation that's going on with this person that's kept them. The, they've never been exposed to sun. Um, there are germs that Jack's never been exposed to. And then there's all the extended family who are desperately happy that they have been found, but then trying to communicate with them and love them and it's how they are dealing with all, and the media, the media um, interest that is around this, this case that has all come to light. And so although it's very much about Jack, I find that the mother's role is really pivotal to the story and how she is dealing with her role as a mother and then also with her own trauma, both within this room and then when she gets into the outside world. So, um, and if you haven't seen the film, the film is really, really good as well. Now the second prompt is Papa Don't Preach and this one asks you to show us a book in which there's a father that you despise or you like. So I'm going to go for the latter one that I really like and this one, Contemporary, A Boy Made of Blocks by Keith Stewart. Now this is all about a 30-something dad called Alex whose marriage is struggling and he also has an eight-year-old son called Sam and he's autistic and Alex is really struggling with his relationship with um, Sam and can't get through to him and there are anger issues and frustration issues on both sides and so when Sam comes to stay they're having difficulties in their relationship but then Alex decides that he's going to get alongside Sam and learn more about Minecraft which Sam has just discovered and together they build this incredible bond playing the game Minecraft side by side and they end up having fantastic um, moments and a real deepening of their relationship to the point where later on um, Sam even enters into quite a high, prof high profile competition in London and it's really emotional. Having taught several autistic children and, um, and, and indeed every year um, having an autistic child in one of my classes, I found that it was a very accurate rep of um, autism, which I know of course takes many facets, but Keith Stewart himself has two sons and one of them was diagnosed with um, autism and this is actually how he um, developed a much stronger relationship with one of his sons. So I just think that's a wonderful representation of a dad doing his best and getting along with his son. Now the third prompt is brothers and sisters. Show us a book with an interesting sibling relationship and I thought I'm going to get some crime in here somehow and I've gone for this one, The Lost Man by Jane Harper. Now although this is not actually my favourite Jane Harper, I still really really enjoyed this one. Um, now all Jane Harper's books are set in Australia and this one is no exception. It is set in the outback in um, Queensland and this is about three brothers 
And at the very beginning, we discover that Cameron, who was deemed as the golden child of the three, he's found dead at the start of this novel. And then it is Nathan, one of the other brothers, who thinks that there is something very suspicious here because Cameron was found far away from his vehicle. And Nathan knows with the way that they've been brought up that there's no way that Cameron would have left his vehicle out there in the outback. So he begins to investigate himself and uncover lots of clues in the extended family and in backpackers as well that come into the area. And there's another brother, as I say, there's a third brother as well who comes into the story too. So yeah, I would thoroughly recommend that. And Jane Harper is amazing at creating this, this barren, hot um, atmosphere and setting, as you can see from the front cover. Now, the fourth prompt is, it's been 84 years. Show us a book that's got a multi-generational structure to it. And for this, I'm going with Homegoing by Jan Gassi. Now, I absolutely love this book. Gave this um, five stars a couple of years ago. It is about two half-sisters, Effia and Essie. And it begins in 18th century Ghana. And we follow Effia, who manages to marry quite a wealthy Englishman, and then begins her line. And then we have Essia, who's imprisoned in the castle dungeon. And then she is sold to the slave trade. And then she then is shipped to America. And so begins then a line, a generational line in the States. And this book actually covers 300 years of, um, of generations, starting with these two half sisters and coming down both lines of this family tree. And it, it's, it's wonderful. The only thing you'd say about it is that every single step, you almost wish that you could have more on each of those stories because they were so gripping, each and every one of them. But, and also I would say, if you do read this, um, read it in the physical form because you really do need the family tree, which is at the beginning of the book. You have to, you find yourself going back to it and to remember the characters and the line that they come through. But yeah, this is a fantastic book um, and promised me that I must read Transcendent Kingdom, her latest book, which I've not got to yet. Now, problem number five is You Rescue Me. Show, me. show us a book that's got an interesting marriage. Now, I mentioned this to Kelly when she tagged me. Um, I find it hard to find books with really good quality marriages with depth. We don't have a lot of great representation of it in, in books. If marriage is portrayed, it's often with like the portrayal um, aspect to it. And all the great love stories that we read about, we see all the build up to the love story and then ultimately getting together, but we don't actually see them marry. We don't see Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy or John Thornton and Margaret Hale, etc. together. We don't see the marriage parts. I was really struggling for this. And in the end, I actually went for a book that I read last year and it's non-fiction. And it's actually called My Steve by Terry Irwin. And actually, if I pull this out, there's a picture of them both together. Now, this memoir I found really fascinating last year because, my goodness, what an interesting marriage this lady had. Now, if you don't know the story, she is American and she was on holiday in Australia and happened to go to the zoo. And then she sees this really dashing young man dealing with the crocodiles and she's instantly attracted and manages to have um, a chat to him. And then she ends up going back to America. And then shortly after that, she comes back to Australia and the rest is history. They fall madly in love. They married quite quickly soon afterwards. And oh my goodness, what an interesting marriage they have. I'm sure as a little girl, she would never have pictured her marriage being sat on the sofa with a, a huge 10 foot snake around you. She would never have been thought that her, she would never thought that her husband was going to be a crocodile hunter, that on their honeymoon, they were going on a crocodile mission. And she's taught how to capture the crocodiles to help them. And this marriage is absolutely fascinating in the passion that these two have for wildlife and for educating people and bringing wildlife, the wildlife experience to others. And then, of course, we have this incredibly sad moment in 2006 where, as we all know, Steve Irwin was killed um, by a stingray. And that moment in the book is really, really emotional when her and her children, they return home after they've had all this news. And it is, it's, 
it's so sad and it's um but the depth of this marriage and she from what i understand from what i've read as well she has barely dated since then and the depth of this love in this marriage is so strong and she has gone on to continue to um to live out his legacy in this passion with the depth of this love as the backbone so i i thought this was a good one to talk about in terms of a very interesting marriage the prop number six is called picture it sicily show us a book with an interesting elderly character um and i'm going to go with an author here who i think is fantastic at writing all characters but he's done two books where he's had two very interesting elderly characters so i'm cheating here a little bit and squeezing in two and that's frederick backman and the first one i want to talk about is a man called ove and this is about a grumpy old man who moves into a street and he's always getting angry with the neighbors and he has his very strict routine um and he's not very warm and welcoming but lo and behold he then begins to interact with the neighbors around and bit by bit, they all help each other and have a positive influence on each other. And it's a really charming book. And it's obviously one of his earlier ones. And the other one is Brit Marie Was Here, which is about a 63 year old woman whose marriage is falling apart. And she goes to this really sad, depleted town called Borg. And she's a bit of a fusspot and a busybody. And it's how she rounds up really the misfits of this sad town and how she manages to have this influence really positive influence on the town and including a really untalented children's football team that she manages to have a positive effect on so he has just a way frederick batman of writing so well um he must be such a good observer of people because he you really feel like he understands people um in his books and the way he writes about them the prop number seven is called Friends with Benefits. And you have to find a book which is about a found family. Um, and I found this one really quite hard, actually. I did think at one point maybe Harry Potter and the Weasley family and they become like his adoptive family. But then I actually thought something a little bit different. And for this one, I've gone for Lost and Found by the Battersea Dogs and Cats Home in London. Now, before you think, well, that's a little bit cheesy, Nikki. I, <laughs> I agree with you and agree with you. But um, I went into this thinking, oh, it's going to be really lovely about all these um, dogs and cats that have found their forever home and everything. But I couldn't get over how emotional it was in actual fact. Um, there's one story about a boys about 10 I think and he develops an autoimmune disease and his whole world implodes he has to drop out of school sport loses loads of his friends and then they get a lurcher called Harper from the Battersea Dogs home and this dog the effect it has and you follow that journey up until when Harper unfortunately um, passes away and it's it's so moving and then there's another one about a woman with cancer and they get this Staffordshire dog from this Battersea Dogs home and how this dog takes her through this journey with cancer it's so moving it was so unexpected that I thought actually this would be a good one for they found their family but the profound effect that um, the, our fur babies can, can have on us and, and enrich your world. And problem number eight is, I think we're alone now. Tell us about a book which has got a character that has been lost or abandoned or orphaned. And for this one, I've gone for a book that I read last year and gave five stars to, Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. Now this is a fantastic book. It has two timelines. It has one which is in 1939 Memphis. And we follow this little girl called Rill and her and her four siblings are living on a barge boat. And one day their mother is heavily pregnant again and her father has to find, rush off the boat with her to find um, a hospital to get her some medical treatment. In the meantime, all the children are kidnapped and taken. And they're taken to this children's home, Tennessee children's home, this orphanage where they are really poorly treated um, and abused there. And it's just dreadful. And 
then they are all prepared and sold on to um, rich people who couldn't have their own um, children. And the sad thing about this is it was based on a true story. This was Georgia Tan, who actually did do this. And she made a huge amount of money by selling these children to rich and sometimes famous families um, in the film world, for example, um, at this time. So it's horrendous story. There's also a current day story that runs through um, where we follow a woman called Avery Stafford. And bit by bit, she puts together her the history in her family. And so you get the connection with the, um, the past line. So yeah, this was brilliant. This was my first Lisa Wingate. And I've since discovered that she's got lots of back catalogue. So I'm gonna be um, discovering more of her work very soon. Now the last prompt is Fur Baby, and that is tell us about a book where an animal has an important role in the story. Now I'm going to tell you about a book which is set in Japan. Now I did show you one in an earlier video called If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura um, with a cat and, and based in Japan. So, but this one today I'm actually going to show you a different one called The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa. Now, this is the story about Nana, this cat, now, which is a male cat, actually. And he finds himself at the beginning going on a road trip with his um, owner called Sotaro. And they are going around Japan, traveling all around and visiting Satoru's friends. And on the way, Nana meets other animals belonging to the friends on Satoru as they travel around. And it's really charming. But what's gnawing away at Nana is, why exactly are we on this road trip? And bit by bit, he puts together the pieces as to why exactly they're on this road trip, which I won't say anymore other than this is hugely emotional. I was in tears at the end of it. And this was a bestseller here in Singapore for months and months and months. And um, it's not very big, um, but it's it packs a punch. So I would definitely recommend, recommend that one. So there we go. That is my first tag video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you read any of these books? Um, please comment be below and please like and subscribe if um, you'd like to see more. Take care and I will see you again very soon. Bye.